Um, I'm Margaret Carney, uh, Director of the International Museum of Dinnerware Design, and I want to welcome you all to our, I don't know what number this is, but our, uh, our fall series of unforgettable dinnerware presentations. Uh, tonight, we're going to be featuring uh, Alison Cross, and she's going to tell us some things I'm dying to hear about Manitoba, stories I don't know yet. Uh, but first, I have a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, besides, I do appreciate you all being here because I know you have choices and it's nice that you joined us. Um, you will remain muted and everything until we're at the Q&A session. Uh, but if you have questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the chat and we will uh, ask those questions at the end of Allison's presentation. Uh, at the time that she's uh, taking questions and answers, you can also raise your hand or put things in the chat. But until then, um, we're all gonna be quiet, including myself in a moment. Okay, so uh, thank you to the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting this event this evening. We really appreciate their, their making it right with us so we don't screw it up. Um, I'm going to do my usual thing, which is a plug for those of you. I'm working on the next one of our menus, which is our newsletter that comes out annually. It's only something you get in print. It doesn't come. It's not an online thing yet. Uh, we're not archaic. We just think you should get something that you can hold in your hands. And um, and what is the other thing I want to recommend? Oh, that you join us a month from now on November 8th. Um, I'm going to be asking you this question. I don't know if you can see this. If you don't know what this is, if you do know what it is, you can put the answer in the chat and I'll appreciate it. If you don't know what it is, this is what I'm going to be talking about a month from now, uh, Glidden Pottery. So presumably if you're here tonight, you either love Russell Wright or you want to learn more about Russell Wright, uh, Russell and Mary Wright. Um, and maybe you collect Eva Zeisel and uh, whomever else, uh, all kinds of things. But if you don't collect Glidden Pottery, I'm hoping that after I tell you about Glidden Pottery on November 8th, the same time, same station, and you'll get uh, announcements about it to register uh, that you'll join us for that event. So without further ado, I'm welcoming Allison Cross, who is Executive Director of Manitoga, the Russell and Mary Wright, uh, home and studio, and she's going to tell us some, and show us incredible pictures. So I hope you've all been, but if you haven't been, put Manitoba on your list of where you want to go. And I don't think I'm going to introduce too much more about Allison other than uh, she's fantastic and has been with Manitoba since 2013 as executive director. But uh, I'm dying to hear what she has to say. I am delighted to be here, and to everyone, it seems. Like it is a, a group that knows one another um, of collectors and enthusiasts. So before I jump in, just because it's something that I always do as executive director, is I put my, my thank yous first so that everyone is acknowledged and I will talk about uh, the team and various people throughout the presentation. But I wanted to upfront um, just do a shout out because the Russell and Mary Wright Design Gallery was at a, de a decade plus uh, project um, from idea to vision to reality. And even before, you know, those of you that have been involved with Manitoba for a very long time, it's always been a desire um, to have to have the design collection at Manitoga, but it took some thinking and effort to bring that to fruition. So I do want to acknowledge Manitoga's current board and former board members, um, and a number of those board members, including Gary Maurer and Dennis McKitten, who are also uh, longtime collectors, were really instrumental in having this happen. I want to thank Anne Wright for her years of shepherding her parents' legacy and her um, faith in us to bring this project forward. I would like to thank, of course, all the donors and all of the other collectors. The Henry Luce Foundation provided a lead grant of $300,000, which really allowed us to, um, to do this project. Lead curator Donald Albrecht, 
the tremendous design team of Studio Joseph, led by Wendy Evans Joseph, River Architects, Southside Design and Building, our contractor Lars, um, Michael Biondo, who photographed so beautifully. You'll see a number of his photographs uh, throughout the presentation. Um, Manitoba staff, of course, and interns. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge Vivian Linares, who was here a decade before me <laughs> and has been here every step of the way to, um, to bring this project to life. And if otherwise noted, the photography, many of them are by Vivian, who has an incredible eye and presents Manitoba in the best possible way. So with that, I will move forward. We're looking at a few photographs of, of the interior and exterior of the design gallery. Very um, honored that we have garnered a number of design awards and it has been so very well received um, by the pu public and collectors alike. So I'm going to, <laughs> Not moving forward. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not forwarding. Where is my... Click okay. on the presentation itself. You might still be on the Zoom application. Um, so click on the presentation. There we go. Okay. And then it should forward. It should Let's forward. Try back. Memory. There you go. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. I love that voice. No, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad you're there. <laughs> um, those of you, just a, a, a blowback. It's the days of old. Remember, we, should, we used to show slides and it would get stuck in the carousel and you couldn't move it forward. Kind of reminds me of those days. Many of you probably know um, or have been to Manitoba. And Dragon Rock, but just a few slides to put um, everything in context. Um, we're looking at um, the property very a few years after um, Russell and Mary Wright purchased the land in 1942. And over 34 years, um, Russell, after Mary Wright passes, develops Manitoga into um, a paradise. Here we're, this is a wonderful um, overhead and you can see the positioning of Dragon Rock on the right, which sits on the very edge of what was the former quarry. Um, he designed a waterfall to feed what was the abandoned pit and it's the heart of the property itself. And you can also see the green roofs, which helps um, nestle the buildings within that landscape. And that was that has and is a major theme at Manitoga. It's the harmony and the integration of nature and design or nature and architecture. This is a wonderful uh, view showing again that connection visually, physically, inside and outside. We're looking at the main house of Dragon Rock and down below the wonderful um, sliding doors where the dining area is. So whereas the quarry pool is the heart of the entire site, the dining area and kitchen was the heart of the home. And this is an interior view, right? So the design is organic modernism, large expanses of glass, um, this room is a bit cantilever cantilevered over the pool. Um, but and what's wonderful here is the dining table, of course, is set with American Modern, which is the line that put, I would say, the most popular line um, in production for the longest and really put Russell and Mary Wright um, on the map. So uh, I love this slide, um, one of their advertisements um, for Iroquois Casual on one side, American Modern on the other. Um, by the time they purchased the property in 1942, Russell and Mary Wright had been 
working within the profession for 10 years already, right? So they had a certain degree of um, acclaim and success and were looking for um, property outside of the city. So that was, let's say, we're talking the early 40s, the late, late 30s into the 40s with American Modern and Iroquois. And then in 1952, they published the Guide to Easier Living, which um, I don't know if, if many of you read of last month, I think there was an article um, in the New York Times talking about guides and design guides and they they um included the guide to easier living as something that's still valid and interesting to read today but it was they published this after years of testing uh lifestyle in various apartments in new york city and then uh dragon rock was a realization right of that continuation of easier or what was considered at the time easier living so I arrived, well, let me, yes. So when I arrived in 2013, Manitoba, the nonprofit, Manitoba, the Russell Wright Design Center, were stewards of the landscape and the architecture. At that time, there was not mm, a, a formed design collection. And there were questions and there had been questions about, well, what about the, the design career of Russell and Mary Wright? And, and how, how, do we, how do we move that forward and raise awareness? So we came together, leadership board, um, senior staff in a retreat and came away with um, the tagline that Manitoba is the home of design in nature, that it is a unique and integrated design expression and the embodiment of the, of the rights life work, and that we would treat what we call the three branches or of home, architecture, design, objects, and nature and landscape as equal and integrated. And that's how we would interpret our site, how we would prioritize it, and how we would tell our story. So one of the things we decided, or we quickly did, was delve into um, the relationship between what was happening in industry, what the rights were doing with products, as they developed the site of Manitoga and their vision of home, right? So we started drawing um, analogies and parallels, right? Between color on the bottom right, of course, is the American modern, modern chartreuse, which you see in the spice bush at Manitoga. In the center is actually one of his later lines, theme um, informal, and this ember glaze, right? We likened it to the reflections of the deep ink of the quarry pool. Upper left is flare, again, a sense of chartreuse. And then in the center and to the right are the white clover pattern, right? In fact, Russell Wright said in his literature and his slide talk that white clover was his favorite, Parker white clover. And on the right, you can see one of his drawings, right? White clover grew on the slopes at Manitoga and Garrison. And so also the native landscape. This is a, a wonderful sugar bowl of the Knowles Esquire grass. And of course we have a, a archival image of um, that plant at Manitoga, as well as the Queen Anne's Lace, right? Another beautiful pattern for Knowles Esquire, um, essential, integral, and we'll see some other images later, right? So this inspiration grounded in the land. And then of course, form and texture with Bauer art pottery in the center, of course, it, one thinks immediately, or I do anyway, of the stones of the quarry um, that Russell brought into the house itself on the left and this wonderful textured wall and the right, one of the many unique 
and handmade knobs, doorknobs, and that's a knob into the studio. You probably hear the train in the background. Let me turn, let me. Okay. And then experiments, experiments in plastic, All right? We have um, Blair Ming lace in the center. And then on either side, you have a grass sliding panel and then the, the in famous beautiful butterfly panel that was in Anne Wright's uh, childhood bathroom. So experimenting with plastics and organic materials within the home and in industry. And then there's a very strong um, influence of Japan. Russell Wright traveled to Japan. You see him on the left there. And then a vignette, a, an actual travel photograph that he took. And then on the right, um, pieces from the rare <laughs> and of late, very uh, valuable theme formal um, Bakelite rack, um, lacquerware. So, um, and then of course, coming back to Manitoba itself, the studio building, um, long low lines, um, very much influenced by a Japanese aesthetic. Then there was, so, so the elements of design, form, color, pattern, texture, um, materiality happening. He, Dragon Rock was an experimental home. It fed the design practice and vice versa. But then there was also the life that was lived at Dragon Rock, right? And these, I, I love these photos. So we have, and I probably have this number wrong, but I'm going to say hundreds and hundreds, um, uh, over 500 archival slides of life um, lived at Manitoga through the years. And on the left is a, uh, a, a summer morning. You can see the light coming in. And on the right, it's um, the fall season. And this is this quote or this phrase is taken from a slide talk that Russell Wright prepared and presented in 1961. So the rust colored casual china decorated with Garrison's shepherd's purse is our main winter wear. The blue wear decorated with white violets that are all over our land is for summer. On the very, very edge, I'm gonna show you a different one, but there's a little white clover. But um, here is a wonderful um, dinner scene with the candles lit. Again, we have Iroquois um, restyled and I think you can make out the shepherd's purse for a fall evening. And then I love this photograph, which um, is summer. It's breakfast in the summer. You can see the white, um, white violets, right? And then here we have the um, bouquet of Queen Anne's lace. And I love the little cereal uh, boxes. I remember those <laughs> in growing up. And then this wonderful uh, dramatic uh, image of um, an evening. And we're, we're assuming that someone was coming to dinner because the bowls and plates are our Botanica Knowles Esquire line. And Russell shares that my company dinnerware is this Botanica pattern. And on each piece is a tracing of a leaf of a different kind of wild plant to be found in Garrison. As a matter of fact, both the shape and the pattern were designed at Garrison. Right. So there was just a richness. Um, I don't know that we had to justify having the collection, but um, it was a it was a big initiative, you know, for a nonprofit to to embrace building a definitive collection and figuring out how to display and share um, that work. So what we what we began doing um, in 2015, more or less. Uh, there was a small room in the main house. It was the powder room. So it was a wet bar, a bathroom, a packaging and flower arranging room, which had not 
and has yet to be restored, had been used as an intern um, alcove and then storage. And so we thought, let's do a series of temporary um, short-term displays to test ideas, to engage visitor interest, and to raise awareness of, of this potential or the design collection. And, I, and it's interesting, and, and it has changed a little bit, but when I first arrived in 2013, I would say that more of the visitors were coming to Manitoba because they were interested in architecture, historic house museums, modernism. And we're surprised to learn about the legacy of Russell and Mary Wright's product design. And conversely, we did have collectors come and, and they hadn't known that this place existed. So that also reinforced our mission to, to tell that uh, entire story and the inter integrated story. So this uh, first show was just a visual delight and spun aluminum from the 1930s, all from the collection of Gary and Laura Maurer. So it was on loan to Manitoga and it was up for, um, for a season. We followed that with another um, show that was nature in design. And these were all pieces from the um, Parker White Clover and the various patterns of the Knowles Esquire line. And here you can see the Queen Anne's Lace, the grass uh, pattern, and then on the left, this um, the um, White Clover, Parker White Clover. And above, one, again, one of those wonderful drawings, um, design drawings for, um, for the lines. And then the third show that we did was actually based on and mostly items that we received as a, a bequest from George Kravis II, which was a wonderful um, surprise. Uh, George, um, some of you may have known George or know of his extraordinary collection. And he visited us with his team, um, I think it was just two years before he passed. And he called us kindred spirits, and we were very fortunate to receive, I think, over 500 um, items from, from his collection. This one focused up its, its, its eye candy, right? It was designed by a former board member, uh, Chuck Burley. I'd like to acknowledge him. And um, it set the stage. This is another slide of... Um, just a smattering of the pieces from George, a lot of spun aluminum, American modern Iroquois, um, and then actually this tile. I think we received six or seven sets of the um, dinnerware issued by the Metropolitan based on the 1930s design. And that was really quite extraordinary to have. Then, so moving, so we're moving forward, we're building the collection, we're raising awareness, and a, a, another board member, Dennis McKitten, um, had long-standing or, or promised gifts to Manitoba. Um, some of them have been made, some are still uh, promised, but he, together with George and Gary Maurer and other of our board members, helped uh, feed this um, vision uh, and the objects that were going to be in the design collection. And here you can see just the variety from the white violets in the upper left, um, pinch dinnerware, the wonderful chase uh, pancake and syrup set, and then probably um, perhaps the highlight, these wonderful um, Glasses from theme formal and informal. There's some American modern mixed in there as well. And then, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, we were very fortunate to receive a lead grant from the Henry Luce Foundation. They had started from the American program. Uh, Terry Carbone um, 
one of her initiatives were, has been, not were, has been to help um, all museums, but historic house museums in particular to show their collections, right? To bring them out of storage, to, they funded a very uh, uh, wonderful uh, project at Chesterwood and we knew about that. So, um, so that helped us, right? That's the kind of air under your wings to, to help fly. So then the next question, okay, so we're building the collection. We're demonstrated and, and are getting feedback from our public, from our grantors, from our donors that yes, the collection um, is important and vibrant and makes sense in, in at Manitoga. And so then we had to figure out or start thinking about, well, where, where, where are we going to display um, these objects? And I'll share here the original plan of Dragon Rock, right? Uh, long and low, two buildings, Russell Wright's uh, bedroom and studio and guest room connected by a pergola, which you can see down here below, to the main shared social space, right? Living, dining, family room, connected by a hallway, right? To the two bedrooms, right? So Annie Wright's uh, childhood bedroom and the bedroom of her nanny, um, Diana, at that, at that time. Uh, and here we can see a series um, I mentioned Annie was only two years old when Mary Wright passed away. So um, Russell and Mary Wright envisioned their home together. I'm not sure what the those original plans were and how they changed, right? From that initial initial concept, probably in the the in the 40s, right, to the early 50s, till when it was finally realized in, in collaboration with the architect David, David Levitt, the plans were drawn up in 1958 and construction complete in 1961, right? So at that time, Russell Wright was a single father, Annie Wright was a young girl, and he designed and created for her an enchanting bedroom, right? You can see, um, this wonderful screen with birds. And here they are. I love this photo um, of father and daughter. I love the expression there. And it had a private terrace right, um, for Annie and, and Diana. So the story though of, of that wing, right? In Anne's lifetime, uh, Russell, renovated, changed the bedroom um, at least three times from a from a, a young girl to a teenager, then I believe into an apartment um, when she was was married. And Anne lived in the house until 2001. She had a life estate. Um, the nonprofit um, purchased that life estate. And from 2001 on, uh, began restoring and in, and began to restore and interpret the site. The bedroom wing served as at, as the offices, right? From that time until 2016, when we relocated um, out of the historic building, so we could continue to restore the structure. And that allowed us to, to think about what these spaces could be. Um, I did want to show this slide because what had, oh, one thing I did want to say is that in the intervening years, most of the original fabric and artifacts of, of the childhood bedroom were dispersed, right? So we, we don't hold on to that, which, figured into our decision to retrofit and reuse the rooms. 
but the bathroom, um, the magical bathroom, uh, was um, in fairly good condition. And we are in the process right now, it's a topic for another day, of deep restoration of, of that, that wonderful room. And ultimately, it will be the symbol of childhood at Manitoga. Um, so this is a, oops, a newer plan. Here is that wing again. So we decided that it would become a 400 square foot design gallery, open space. And then what was the former garage, which had been used as offices would serve as a kitchenette and upgraded um, bathrooms. And this is just one, I promise you, I'm not going to show you a lot of floor plans, even though it's my inclination. Um, on the left, uh, the dotted lines are just showing the, the demolition, right? So we took down the, the, the room in between the two bedrooms to create a larger open space. Um, I will note for those preservationists that we, whatever fabric original fabric was there, we dismantled, we cataloged, it is stored in our in our cistern, and should in the future, the rooms want to be reinstated, that is possible. Um, that was our, our due diligence. And on the right is showing this, this um, open space and just the very general scheme, which was the walls would be color, form, and pattern. And then in the center would be um, a timeline, the more didactic element of, of the exhibition. I thought this was fun to show because Studio Joseph, who again are, were wonderful to work with, um, ultimately, we went through a lot of conversations, charrettes, discussions around design and what this should be. And they came up with two, you know, final schemes for the board and the collections committee and various people to weigh in on. Um, the left, um, a more, I, I'm going to say traditional treatment, rectilinear with a, um, you know, linear uh, timeline at the table on the left. And then on the right, um, those of you who have been, who saw the earlier photographs, this was the, the, the design that was selected more organic with these wonderful curved um, shelving units, this organic timeline in blonde wood. Right. It was an, an acknowledgement to their uh, blonde wood furniture. thought it was interesting that most of the architects on our board uh, liked the rectilinear one on the left. Uh, but the collectors uh, voted for the design on the right. I think there was a there was a, a synergy and a connection with the roundness of some of those forms and um, the organic quality that. Um, most of us found very exciting and unexpected. I also think that it stands out from the architecture itself, right? And we'll see that later on. So a uh, big, big job <laughs> to um, dismantle uh, what was there and find in the walls things that needed to be corrected, new, um, insulation and new flooring and you're looking out at this extraordinary view uh, a wonderful window wall that was put in um, to to con to make that wonderful connection you can see the template on the cent in the center oops sorry um, was is where the timeline was going to be placed I'm just showing you some of the uh, work that went on, I did want to mention that design, design charrette conversations were going on in 2019, 2020, the year of COVID. We had a meeting in March, literally the week before everything shut down. 
Thankfully, um, on the left here is my colleague, Lars Lindbergh, who is our general contractor. He was a sole proprietor, so he was able to continue working, and there I am doing my part, and what we're doing is uh, relocating this wonderful experimental panel by Russell Wright, which was part of the conversation. Do we do we save that and reuse it? Do we store it? And the, you know, the let's say the Manitoba vote was it's very important for the entrance sequence for the site itself. Let's incorporate it into the design. And we'll see that later. This is just a wonderful um installation photo. I, I, I love that here. You can see the juxtaposition of the original white oak frame um, and this just very seductive and wonderful um, exhibition design casing, right? And yeah, let's just stop there. So then the next step, okay, so now we have the casework in and we have the Timeline table, which is this wonderful stepping um, installed. And then, of course, it is the object. Um, object selection had gone on now for a mm, year and a half, maybe two years. And then it was the placement. Uh, on the right is uh, curator Donald Albrecht um, arranging or making final decisions about the timeline table. And then on the left, um, Wendy Evans Joseph and myself placing um, the oceana and spun aluminum and then of course on the table these wonderful um celery dishes from american Mono. that was a really fun couple of days <laughs> and uh and then here is the the finished product looking out um out at the quarry right with the timeline table in the center and then um and then I'll just go through, as I showed in the earlier diagram, and I should state that part of the curatorial decision was that the walls, because most people visiting would be coming on a tour, right, would have walked through the landscape, visited the house and studio, and this was the finale and not something that most visitors are going to spend an hour in the gallery. So it it the design goals was for it to be very visually impactful as the entire site is and that it continued the sensory experience. And here you have this just wonderful uh, color, right? So American modern um, glassware, the colors of American modern. So the celery dishes are a timeline from the 1939 to the end of production in the late 1950s. And then to the right, you can't see the whole display, but the idea was to have an entire set in one color. And I think <laughs> when we opened, we were missing a few pieces and we had them and we added them in. And I think there might be one piece um, that we just are, have a promised gift of a hostess plate and cup, covered cup that will have to fit in there. Um, and then, of course, pattern, which uh, the, the white Parker white clover is selected, you know, very, very graphic and quite beautiful. And then the, the pattern swings around. So here is that panel that we elected to keep, the fallen leaves panel. And in front of it, this just the extraordinary, elegant uh, Knowles Esquire line, the grass, um, the botanica, and then the Queen Anne's lace. And I did want to point out, and we could talk a little bit about that, um, the compote and the teapot, which is actually on the, the top of the timeline, are the actual pieces that were used by Russell and Anne Wright at Dragon Rock. And these came back to us um, through donors, um, Mary and Ch um, Charles um, Knopf, longtime friends of Anne Wright, who had uh, won these pieces or purchased these pieces at one of the auctions years ago. 
and we were just thrilled to have them back. Form, all right, so spun aluminum, Oceana, uh, the wonderful uh, Samson chair, and of course, art pottery on the bottom. Then that section also, we try to, how do we incorporate lifestyle? Okay, that's in the timeline and through these wonderful vintage um, ads from American modern to residential, Iroquois, and then of course the furniture. And then the timeline itself, just showing a few of those vignettes so you can spend more time. Uh, 1930s, um, of course, there's an early influence of Bauhaus and form follows function, uh, the wonderful uh, circus animal seal, and then uh, Oceana with uh, Russell Wright's signature. And then that's going to lead into the 40s, where it is the ceramic, the organic ceramics, this wonderful manta ray in black and white, quite rare. And then it comes around 40s into the 50s, eclipse. Um, and you can just see the beginning of theme formal in the 1960s. So one of our um, goals, again, a design goal, which was achieved, and this is the entrance right from the from the east, the uh, west hallway. So you, again, you visited the, the house, the studio, you come back over through the pergola. And then at the end is this just um, visually delightful and seductive um, view that draws you in. And then to the left is the fallen leaves panel. For many, many years, part of the tour experience, this door was shut because these were offices. And it said, stay out or <laughs> no admittance or something like that. I can't remember. So everyone would visit Anne's bathroom and then be bottleneck into this um, hallway and backtrack and go out the living room terrace. Now you enter and then turn the corner and you have this extraordinary uh, light filled experience. Um, I think first you might be drawn to the view, right? Um, and then the walls unfold and it's a, it's a culmination, right? Um, of the experience at Manitoga and everything that we're trying to, to share. So the next step is um, the design gallery, in addition to um, being very successful in winning a number of design awards and lighting awards. The purpose is to educate, right? As, as is our mission, right? To further the legacy and um, talk about design and good design. So on the left, we have a children's program. You can see, of course, uh, that was during or maybe into second year of COVID. And on the right, some of you, there you are, Bill Strauss. Um, Lindsay Pract and, and Gary Maurer, um, serious in-depth collectors of Russell and Mary Wright. And this was our Collectors Afternoon, which is a very special program um, hosted by Ann Wright that brings collectors together. And I think this was the, the first year that the design gallery was open. And we have research um, publications. I'll talk a little bit more about that. This is an exhibition that was done at the Edith Farnsworth house. Um, Edith Farnsworth Reconsidered, I believe was the name, and, and she had owned Russell Wright. And from archival photos, they identified um, white Iroquois. And so we lent them from the design collection, some of these pieces that, and that was, um, staged in 2020 and 21. Um, really quite wonderful. That's something that we will do more of um, as the time and staff and resources allow. Then, so, so another, so the design gallery has enriched our interpretation, our programming, and then also our holdings. So on the left, is the company dinnerware, right? The Knowles Esquire Botanica that we acquired from the Nauf's. So they had donated those two signature pieces 
and then um, we're open to our um, having the entire collection. And then on the right is the actual summer blue wear, the Iroquois casual white violet and ice blue uh, that Annie had. And, and she shared, shared the story that when um, Russell Wright passed away, Annie sent the set to Diana because he had designed it for her or with her in mind because white violets were um, her, her, one of her favorite flowers. And then when Diana uh, Boyce passed, one of their family members sent it back to Annie. So um, this is an interesting um, juncture or thing we've, we think about because we have Manitoba has a collections policy and plan, right? So we are to collect X amount of this, you know, every set or a set of American modern in every color, as you can imagine, representative. And then there is a section that is about provenance, right? When possible, a highest priority or choice would be or might be objects or designed objects owned by Russell Wright himself, extended family um, of that era, right? So this is part of, of that very special category. Um, we will also be, we have promised gifts from Russell Wright's um, partner, Joe Chapman, um, who has a number of items from the house as well as dinnerware um, that was used during um, his lifetime there, the last decade of, of Russell Wright's life. And then um, some other special gifts coming our way. Um, these are both by Mary Wright. On the left is a leather pair cigarette holder, extraordinary um, piece. And then on the right, a gift from Anne Wright is one of the um, country garden plates, which is just delicious. And then a recent gift or last year, maybe two years ago from the collector Ante Bil Bilgute, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. These wonderful creamers, uh, Iroquois, and I believe every color, we might be missing one, every color and pattern, but it's, it's so much fun because here's the white clover again, and then the shepherd's purse and, um, we have them, do I have that picture? Maybe not yet, I'll get there. I'm gonna come back to those. So then um, 2022 on the right, our dear friend and uh, wonderful person, Jennifer Golub published uh, Russell and Mary Wright, Dragon Rock at Manitoba. If you don't have it, please go buy the book, um, Princeton Architectural Press, and it tells, a beautiful story and the early story of Russell and Mary Wright um, meeting at the Maverick Festival, um, falling in love, marrying, uh, being influenced by their work there and performance and within a quarry to perhaps envision what Manitoba could be. So I thank Jennifer for putting us on the road to thinking about and presenting Manitoga as a shared vision of Russell and Mary Wright, even though Mary did not live to um, see it built or live there within Dragon Rock. And that also precipitated our, calling it the Russell and Mary Wright Design Gallery. Those of you who, who know their partnership, um, Russell is often described, and Donald Albrecht uses the term as Russell as the form giver, which helps us see that as the sculptor or the lead designer, and Mary as an equal partner in ideas, in marketing, in um, in in selling, right? Because together they made this a success. So on the left, then an announcement in 2023 that we received from Gary and Laura Maurer, um, a million dollar gift for the Collections Endowment Fund. 
And along with that, um, the first installment of their promise gift of their entire collection. And the gift last year was the very early pieces, the 1930s um, into the 40s. And here you're seeing the um, wonderful circus animals. And uh, it also included the, the andirons, right? The wonderful reindeer. And this one actually has Russell Wright's name. And I think it says 1933. And then the ebony grand piano. Um, custom designed for Wurlitzer is now part of Manitoba's design collection. On the left, um, some very early plantain pieces and chase ice bowls, and then more of the circus animals um, or bookends on that lower shelf, and the cowboy armchair, right, which came from Manitoba or Dragon Rock via Annie to Gary Maurer, and now it has come back to us. And here you see on the left, uh, the chair in the probably the early 70s, I'm going to say, um, on the lower level. And then here it is um, this year in the same um, location and also with the brass table. So that has been very fun. And that's something that is also the extension of the design collection because of the, the limited space within the design gallery that when we can, um, we will display furniture or furnishings within Dragon Rock um, main house and studio. And then this last one section is also using the collection in dialogue with our, I guess it's been also a decade now, the art and design residency program where we invite artists and designers to either create new work or curate their work in dialogue with Dragon Rock, the legacy. And in this particular case, this year, um, the artist, the ceramic artist, Stephanie Shi, um, her wonderful, uh, Trump Loy ceramics, Hennessy, and these pieces that are in the kitchen pantry are seen in juxtaposition with the design collection. Spun aluminum also is a wonderful vignette because it's the 1930s spun aluminum from our collection, which sits on the revolving cocktail table, which was a prototype, um, which uh, I believe is on loan from Bill Strauss. And it's just really great fun. And then ending with this slide where we started at the, at the core in terms of dining and dinnerware. And this is Stephanie's piece, the Royal Dan Dance um, Biscuits, which um, is really fun. People don't know it's ceramic and it's part of our interpretation. And I think that that is my last slide. And this slide just gives credit to everyone who um, made this possible. And as I said, it was a, a team effort. It was strategic. It was one step at a time. And now we're in the position to look at wh where now. And so that's one of the things that we're thinking of as, a, as an organization to find, identify, build a permanent home for, for our growing design collection. And then this last slide is just, it's fun because we continue one of our programmatic um, experiences is to have occasions to dine at Manitoga inside and outside. This is a a meeting and a luncheon on, on American Modern. We also have, as part of our um, collections, we have a permanent design collection, and then we have a working collection, which are pieces that we use for exhibitions, for catering, for dining, and for special occasions. So I think that this is a fun slide to end on. Um, and to invite you all to join us um, at Manitoba, hopefully um, 
for dinner. Uh, that's one thing that Annie, uh, the collector's afternoon, it's it's catered by Anne Wright and Mark um, Romulo, another collector. And of course, we serve on uh, our working collection. And uh, that's that's what I have. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. We've got a question already from Bill Walker. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> in the, the earlier um, images of the house showing the, the dining area. Yeah. Uh, seems like it's a very small table that would have um, difficulty seating more than maybe four or five people. Um, did uh, Russell Wright ever entertain larger groups or was did it to kind of keep it intimate at Manitoga? <laughs> Very good question. Can you still see my last slide? No, um, your last no. slide sort of threw a wrench into my question. Because <laughs> um, well, I'm not going to share it again, but yes. In fact, one of the things that Russell Wright did with the dining table and chairs, some of you may have noticed that it's an Aero Saarinen table and Eames chairs right, from Herman Miller. He altered both of the, both the chairs and the dining table. He created, he used the tulip pedestal. He created his own tabletop based on the original, but did it so that it was connected with wing nuts, could be removed. And then he had a larger table, which you saw in the last slide, a plywood, piece of plywood to sit 10 people. So for larger entertaining. So we still have that and we switch them out when we entertain. So he did do that. And then there was a third part to that. And we've not succeeded in doing this yet. I think maybe we just need to be a little bit more forceful. The actual pedestal is screwed into, you know, the stone floor, but can be un screwed so that there could be dancing. <laughs> We've not had a dance party yet, but I think that um, it's possible and maybe during holidays it was taken out. So it was a flexible space. Well, your your invitation for people to visit has already has some results. Here's someone <laughs> who says, what a great coincidence for coming to uh, we are coming to Manitoga on dot 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 drove here from home in New Mexico. Great, great. She's expecting a visitor. Send me an email. I'd, I'd love to see you if it if it's the same day or if, I, if I'm here. Uh, another question, uh, uh -huh. what, lines, what lines are you hoping to add? To, to add to our design um, collection? We, as I noted before, we do not, we would love to have some of the theme formal lacquerware. We have very few pieces of that. Um, there's not, to my knowledge, a lot out there. Um, and some of you probably know more than I do about this and this line. My understanding is that it, most of it was produced in Japan. I'm not sure it ever went to market in the United States so that the objects that are out there may be samples um, that were sent or, you know, um, test runs. We are fortunate to have promised gifts of, of the porcelain ware, and we do have some of the stoneware, um, but also the glassware of theme Informal, we have very little of that. There's glass bowls as well as tumblers. We have some tumblers. So that's a line that is um, rare and we'd like to have. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I think that there are um, areas in each of the lines that we are still building in terms of having the serving pieces as well as the the dishware so i'm i'm, I'm as we go i'm you know i'm thinking uh spun aluminum we have um quite a bit of that and have promised gifts um 
from the Maurer collection that should satisfy that. Oh, if anyone has, I saw this in an ad, our, um, our colleague in collections, there is, it's spun aluminum and it's the travel set. I, I've seen it. Um, there's an ad that it's on an airplane and you kind of open it and would love to have that uh, as well as um, some of those early carts. And of course there's snow glass, right? We don't have, uh, we have a few pieces of snow glass and that's interesting because I think Annie has a funny story about um, in the day, there was so much of it that um, some of it ended up getting dumped in the Rio Grande. I don't know if that's true, Anna. You can you can um, pipe in and, and and tell that if you're if you're able to. But we have very few pieces of snow glass. We have a few from from Annie and a few other people. So and then lamps. But that you know, Bill Strauss can speak to the lighting situation. There's a lot of um, I don't know, misinformation or difficulty identifying what are um, Russell Wright lamps and lighting and not. So that's an area that we can build. And then of course there is the Sovereign, which is the line we believe designed by M Mary and Russell Wright together. I think we may have just one piece of that and that would be very special. Uh, as well as other objects designed by uh, Mary Wright, her early Oceana country gardens. We have we have some holdings in that, and we have some promised gifts there. So um, yeah, so we are happy to hear about um, objects that people may have that would uh, complement our collection and. Uh, So um, do you have any uh, prototypes and sketchbooks in the collection? And if so, are, there, are any on display? None are on display. We have recently um, from Anne Wright, thank you, Anne, received um, some unpublished design drawings, um, a sketchbook uh, from Russell uh, Wright, some personal artifacts of both Mary and Russell. So that's that's another area that we're thinking about now and how to how to move forward. What is the strategy? Many of you may know that the most of the professional archives are at Syracuse University, the special library. So the business papers, some of those models and maquettes and, and drawings. And, and Annie has some personal archives and, and she has been donating some of those to, to us um, at Manitoga. And then we have, as I mentioned earlier, this incredible um, archive of slides um, and photographs of the, the making of Dragon Rock and early travel slides so that it really is um, can be comprehensive. So we're, and that would go along with what is the next step for the design collection that then could also incorporate the papers, right? Um, so that's, that's all to be looked at. Mm -hmm. So another question. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that, uh, it's been observed before, but there are some uh, kind of similarities between uh, Manitoga and Falling Water. Yes. You had inter interactions with Falling Water or maybe done some collaborative work or uh, sharing of collection or anything like that? We have not shared um, collections um, at all, um, but we know each other <laughs> in terms of um, colleagues and staffing. We actually had their operations manager visit uh, Justin, who is the relatively new executive director, has been to Manitoga. I have been there. Um, that's, you know, that's something certainly in the future. We do know that um, Russell Wright in his lifetime visited Frank Lloyd Wright at Taliesin East 
and then traveled to Japan. I'm sure, well, I do know that he knew Edgar Kaufman Jr. We have Christmas cards that were exchanged, would have known certainly of the design of falling water. Um, I'm not, we have a few photographs that suggest that he may have been there and taken those photographs. So there's definitely an, a, a design influence and knowledge. And uh, yeah, there's there's lots of, there will be many opportunities for collaborations and for sharing our collections. And that's, um, and that is a whole, what department <laughs> initiative field in itself, right? So that's something that now we're beginning to plan for in terms of what, what might that look like? What does it take in terms of staff resources, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I think we're um, kind of run over our, um, our normal time. So okay. question. What's your favorite room or place in the in the house in Manitoba? Oh. Oh, what is my favorite? I find I find the studio very Well, let me put it this way. I am not I'm not going to say I have a favorite. I'm going to say I have a favorite for different times of day and different seasons. And I think that that's what Wright intended with the design, the way the sunlight comes in on a winter afternoon in the studio is just um, magical. And you know, to be at the, in the kitchen or at the dining area on a misty morning you know, it just um, summer in the living room with the terrace open or the moon terrace. So it really, you know, one of the challenges of presenting a challenge, but presenting Manitoba to the public and through programming is we try to offer opportunities to be on site at different times of day and in different seasons, right? That's why our performances are in the fall. There's nothing like a still fall day hearing music in, in, in and around the quarry, right? Or taking a, a, a sunset walk up on one of the um, Oseo outlooks. So um, I just, you know, I heard, I think, Russell Wright did when, and Russell and Mary, sorry, when they visited the site and purchased it, it, it was his muse for his lifetime. I think you hear the siren song. I think I heard it in 2013. I think um, many of our visitors and certainly our longstanding board members um, do and it's it's a place that you um, that you fall in love with, and we we try to present it the sense of home, right? The sense of belonging, of ownership and relationship, and return visits, and um, giving it that 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 life. Because even though it's no longer. We're, we are a contemporary site. We are a design center. It's no longer a residence. But the scale is residential. The intimacy is residential. And um, that's one of our, uh, part of our mission to, to capture that and to share that. I won't talk anymore. <laughs> Allison, this was fantastic. I think you're going to have a stampede of people come visit Manitoba during the beautiful uh, fall weather. And now we know that winter is beautiful and summer and everything else. So yeah. I thank you very much. Uh, other people, uh, do you want to give your email or a website or something so people can maybe sure. want to write in the chat before we yep. all vanish? Yeah. Uh, or you can so tell people. <laughs> it's 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 easy. My email is a cross a c r o s s at visitmanitoga.org. 
and it's listed on the website. If you look under contact, um, it's there. And I'm, I'm happy to have you email me. I'm happy to answer questions. And as I said, would love to share Manitoba with you. Thank and, you the, and the design collection. Thank you all. Thank you for, Thank you. for joining. Uh, we'll see you on uh, November 8th, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank Bye -bye. you.